On the brink of a historic moment with ISRO's Aditya L1 marking its maiden solar mission. ISRO released latest images of the preparations. The spacecraft launch rehearsal is complete and final checks are cleared, marking the countdown to the epic launch. As anticipation builds, the nation awaits the green signal for the liftoff at 11.50 a.m. on September 2. The mission aims to unveil groundbreaking insights into our solar system, a testament to India's growing space prowess. The Aditya L1 uh, mission is going to be launched on 2nd of September at 11.50 a.m. from Sriharikota. And this is going to be launched on the PSLV C-57 launcher. Now this uh, mission is, the total weight is uh, not as much as Chandrayaan-3. Now this launch vehicle will be the, or, the, the kind of orbit it will take, the, will be similar, the route it takes will be similar. Once it is launched, it will go on a circular orbit first, and then it will uh, slingshot and make it into an elliptical orbit. So the spacecraft is locked and loaded and is all set to begin its journey to the sun. The primary payload on board the spacecraft for the Aditya L1 mission is proudly made in India. It has been designed, built and studied by the team at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. My colleague Deepak uh, spoke to the team behind the payload. Listen in. In just a few hours from now, the rocket ship carrying the Aditya L1 satellite is going to be headed towards the sun. After a successful mission towards the moon and even a soft landing that has been achieved by ISRO, this is of course a major mission that's being carried out. With me is the principal investigator who's of course been the brain behind this particular payload. He and we should more importantly here understand that this particular payload was created in Bengaluru at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Joining me is Mr. Ramesh, sir, thank you so much for speaking to us quickly. If you could tell us, sir, when did this collaboration with ISRO and the Indian Institute of Astrophysics really come about? See, before I start this interview, I must admit that there have been principal investigators before me, and yeah. presently I am the principal investigator, and this is a team effort, so the credit goes to the entire team who are behind this mission. Yeah. And coming to the specifics, Indian Institute of Astrophysics have got almost more than 100 years of experience yeah. in carrying out observations of the solar atmosphere, particularly during the Coronal, solar coronal eclipses and based on the data that was collected over several decades it was felt that one need to study the corona on a 24 by 7 basis outside of the eclipses also and the only place from which such observations are possible is not from the ground but from some specific vantage points in the space okay. and so you need to collaborate with the space agents to carry out these observations and uh, in mid uh, 2012-2013 uh, and all, there was this announcement of opportunity from ISRO to carry out solar observations from the space using their space missions and IEA submitted a proposal and uh, they had designed this uh, VELC which is the Visible Emission Line Coronograph which is meant for studying the solar corona as the name itself says and today we are in a stage where this coming Saturday this whole uh, space mission is going to be launch so we have the VELC that you're talking about this is the payload that's going to be on board uh, you know uh, the spacecraft if you could take us through the importance of this uh, in relation to the earth because many would assume well we're studying the sun this seems too theoretical is this going to be of any sort of relevance to the people here on earth at this juncture take us through that detail sir see any cosmic body whether it's the sun or any other star it can be observed with a ground based facility also Observations from the ground, they have a dawn to dusk cycle in the sense that maybe in the morning when the sun comes about the east horizon, you can start an observation and the evening when the sun goes down below the west horizon, you have to stop the observations. At the max, it can be observed for about 9 to 10 hours in a day. But if you want to study the events which can happen on the solar atmosphere, for example, specifically in the case of the solar corona, like what is happening in the earth, which, is the, which are called the earthquakes, there are something called the solar quakes. We okay. don't know when a solar quake will occur. Whenever there is a solar quake, which we call as a coronal mass ejection or the CME, that is the coronal material is thrown out into the interplanetary space. Now, when you say the coronal material is thrown out into the interplanetary space, the mass of this expelled material can be as high as 10 power 15 grams. Okay. And they can race towards the Earth in particular or any other direction in the space at speeds of about 3,000 kilometers per second, and they carry an energy of approximately 10 power 30 years. Okay. So 
consider a situation when such an expulsion from the sun, energetic expulsion from the sun is headed towards the air and that happens to be a satellite in the line of the sight. When I say a satellite, these are these instruments on which the life on the earth is very much dependent on, yeah. be it watching the TV, be it watching a cricket match, be it watch a movie or your mobile communications or your uh, uh, or global portion, etc. All these things are dependent on that. So though these uh, uh, explosive material which is traveling towards the earth may not cause any physical damage to the satellite, it can engulf, these charged particles can engulf the satellite like what happens when a beehive is disturbed. So all the electronics on board can malfunction. Okay. And all these solar panels which are outside there of the spacecraft from which the spacecraft derives its power and all, it can malfunction. If you want to give an example, in 1987, when one such massive solar eruption took place, the whole city of Quebec in Canada went out of power for almost 72 hours. Yeah. Consider a situation that is no satellite in the line of sight. They come all the way up to the Earth. They can stream in into the Earth's atmosphere via the Earth's magnetic field lines. Mm. When it, they travel along the Earth's magnetic field lines, the Earth's magnetic field is disturbed. Yeah, you were talking about an airport as well being shut down. And also, the very late, very recently in 2017, the Zurich airport went out of control for almost 17 hours, which there was a CME that it was found. So, there is a situation when these eruptions taking place on the solar atmosphere, and if they are directed towards the Earth, the life on the Earth can be affected. And this field of study is called as a space weather because it can lead to disturbances in the near Earth space. Yeah. So one of the main motives behind this mission is to study these things which can happen any time during a day. Yeah. So we need a 24 hours continuous observations of the sun. And also we need observations which are not affected by the, for example, the dust particles in the Earth's atmosphere. So we are going to the space with the help of ISRO to carry out this observation from a plane, the Lagrangian L1 point, where you can see the sun 24 hours without a down to dust cycle. Mm, got it. So on board uh, the VELC, uh, what are the main, uh, you know, type of experiments that can be con uh, conducted and what is it capable of? So in brief, As far as the VELC is concerned, we have two, four different payloads. One is this coronagraph, which is helping us to study the corona from the place where it starts. Since we are able to study the corona, we'll be able to study the corona from the place where it starts. For example, this coronal eruption from its genesis, from where it is born, till it hits the grave. We'll be able, it's sort of a cradle to grave study of this coronal mass ejections we'll be able to carry out with this coronagraph. The other important thing is, for any eruption to take place in the solar atmosphere, the magnetic field changes. Yeah is very, very important. So we also have an instrument called a polarimeter to study the magnetic field changes which can lead to these type of explosions on the solar atmosphere. Okay. These two things will be doing it for the first time in the history of the solar science in the world. Though there have been previous ESA and NASA missions, they were not able to see the corona right from the place where it starts. Right. And they also were not able to study the magnetic field changes. Though there have been studies from the ground, ground-based instruments have always their limitations. So that way, these two studies with the VLC payload on the Aditya L1 mission will be a unique attempt for the first time by the Indian scientific community with the help of ISRO. So last question I'd like to ask you, you did say it is a team effort, you did say for multiple years at least about a decade work has been going on. Uh, if you could take us to some of the efforts that have been on to ensure that this is, uh, you know, uh, a payload that will actually be on board the Aditya L1, considering you're going towards the sun, even the make of it of course is supposed to be quite unique. See, these are missions where, see, for example, when we have a ground-based telescope, there is a particular part in the telescope which malfunctions. In the evening, we can replace with some spare part. But here, this is a, a one-time shot. Yeah. So whatever instruments, be it the optical components or be it the electronics, they must be space qualified. When I say the space qualified, the temperatures can go to the extreme plus degrees and extreme minus degrees. So in ISRO, they put us through a sternness test, what is called as a thermovac test where they take the temperatures to plus 80 degrees centigrade, where these components should behave effectively. And also they take us to minus 80 degrees centigrade, where again this should perform effectively. So these are called the space qualified components. And these space qualified components in addition to the optics, for example, we are trying to design a mirror which can capture the light coming from the sun. Yeah. The impurities on the surface of the mirror should be absolutely minimum so that the mirror themselves does not deform the light that is coming in. So all these space qualified things, to design them, to check them, to thoroughly establish their characteristics, it is not an overnight job. And keep in mind, this is a one-time effort. 
there is no point of return coming back that you come back and then change the component again so it has taken almost close to seven to eight years to make these things space qualified thoroughly go through the grilling test procedures of ISRO and reach this present stage where it is ready for launch now. So thank you so much for giving us these answers in detail and uh, spending this quality time with us. Well, we wish uh, you and the scientists at ISRO the very best and let's hope that uh, just like Andreyan 3, the Aditya L1 mission as well is a grand success. We are here with the scientists at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics who have been instrumental in ensuring that uh, this uh, particular payload is on board and more importantly ensuring that the experiments that ISRO wants to conduct can be successfully done using uh, you know, all the science behind this particular payload. With me is the team that's uh, built this payload from scratch here at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Sir, firstly I'd come to you, if you, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us uh, you know, the work that you've been carrying out here at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Yeah, thank you. I am Dr. Naga Bhushna here. I am leading the Mechanical Systems Design Group. And uh, I was basically a designer of this uh, uh, instrument, Mechanical Systems especially. And uh, this, uh, we have, uh, th this VELC is a Visible Emission Line Solar Corona Graph. So this is the full uh, uh, name for this instrument, whatever we have built here. And this uh, system is uh, quite challenging uh, uh, and uh, we carried some of the exper experience what we gained from the earlier mission AstroSat, UV on, uh, UV-80 on board AstroSat also. And all of us uh, here, we are all associated with the earlier missions also. That's how we could step into this mission and we can uh, do this uh, thing. And uh, here we have these uh, uh, many challenges and many special materials that we have to consider to uh, build this mission because this is con this consists of uh, 18 optical assemb assemblies uh, which uh, which is derived from uh, uh, like 48 uh, uh, sub assemblies uh, and that is uh, uh, embedded in an envelope like this See, what you are uh, seeing here is a scale model this dimension what is you are seeing is about 1.6 meter yeah. and this dimension whatever you are seeing is about one meter and the height being about 0.4 meter and within this envelope all these thing instruments has to come inside yeah. and uh, the dimensional accuracy is about like uh, uh, less than 10 arc second we have to align all these optical instruments otherwise any solar uh, light which is entering through this aperture which will get deployed in the outer space so light enters through this thing and uh, and uh, there is a lens which blocks the disk light and allows only the coronal light into the system and the coronal light is imaged in an imaging channel and then uh, later it is uh, uh, splitted into three different uh, channels for spectroscopic analysis and other things. Firstly, congratulations that you know something that you've built is now uh, actually going out of space and heading towards the sun. If you could tell us what has your role been and how crucial has it been in this particular yeah, payload. Sir. And I am glad, glad to be part of this uh, wonderful team and I I am Kathiravan, so I am taking care of this, I am the lead for the contamination control, process control and for the facility developments. Here actually this Aditya VLC has uh, posed uh, many challenges during the initial pages uh, uh, because it has a strict or stringent cleanliness requirements. So we have to devise a methodology with a careful planning to take care of both particulate and molecular contamination so that we can keep within the budget. So here this particulate and molecular contamination which is, which is depositing on the super polished primary mirror which Navabhushan talked about. So any deposition, any layer of deposition on the primary mirror can completely mask the uh, coronal light which is our field of interest. Any scattering from the primary mirror can completely kill the our field of interest. That's why we have given a lot of uh, importance and a lot of methodology has been involved right from the design phase and the methodology has been devised to, to take care of the contamination at each and every steps okay, to meet the ambitious requirement of Aditya. For that, we have, we have made many uh, technological developments and technological changes and upgradations to meet the requirement. Uh, one of the main thing is upgradation of Professor MJK Menon Laboratory to a class 10 clean environment. Okay, so this, this is a kind of a state of the heart facility. So I am sure only handful of people in the world has such kind of a facility and we are having a very good facility uh, to meet the, uh, this has been upgraded to meet Aditya requirements. 
Yeah, thank you. My name is Amit Kumar. I am uh, head of the Department of Electronics. So my role was given to build the detector system from the scratch. So when we started this uh, discussion with the science, what is the requirement, how they want to use the camera on board. So it was uh, quite challenging. So when we worked out, then what we find out that it needs an intelligent system which is quite flexible and it can take the commands as the requirement of science is after launch also. Because once the, it is launched, the system should be flexible to take the future requirements also. In that, uh, keeping all these requirements in mind, an intelligent system has been built with the, along the session of SAC Ahmedabad, that is uh, one of the center of ISRO. And it was quite challenging because when the detector was realized, hardware came in hand, Corona also was in front of us. So in that uh, time also, uh, in our lab, through the video conferencing and through the lot of people are working with the restricted environment, we could able to do the test and calibration of the detector system. And my, my, my job also did not stop there. I, it was beyond that that I had to do the mission operations, how it has to operate on board. And the data pipeline, data reduction also, that was my part of the system. That is because things are growing that way. The detector system is capable of giving actually two terabits per day. But the things the onboard does not have that much of memory capacity like we have computer on ground. It has to be uh, do without uh, compromising the science goals. So then we made this intelligence system with that the memory requirement has come down to 132 gigabits per day. So that's how the system has been built and it was a nice system. I really proud that my team was working with me and that everybody has given his best effort to make the system pakka. So I wish to a successful launch and it should reach the L1 orbit and do the work as it is planned for the mission. Yeah.